Alright everyone, time for your daily dose of Don't Get Black Pilled, link in the description. Not archived, of course, this is from RCP. I don't usually archive those links because it's an aggregation site. They're very, very even-handed. I really like RCP and Ground News and a few of these others. Uh, they do a good job. Always use a news aggregator, by the way. If you're getting your news only from one or two sites, you're in an echo chamber. Whether it's right-wing, left-wing, conservative, liberal, far-left, it doesn't need libertarian. Uh, don't be in an echo chamber. In order to take the pulse of society and also to broaden your perspective, you or at least know your enemy, you know, if you're completely lopsided, uh, you have to pay attention to uh, multiple uh, sources of information. It's just like I recommend that everyone in the world get news from me, but you shouldn't just get news from just me. Uh, you should watch other content creators. The legacy media, I have to sw uh, swill through that, the, the pond of scum that is the legacy media all of the time in order to bring you infotainment. Um, Kamala's surge does not exist. The link in the description will show you the current matchup, assuming there were no toss-up states, assuming that the polls swung in the direction of the candidates that were ahead, Trump would win the election. It wouldn't be a huge win, but I suspect that the polls are undersampling his support. Um, I suspect that he will come out ahead of that. Now, things could change. Let's say that the DNC, things calm down there, and everyone gives really great speeches, and the American people are like, hmm, well, Democratic National Convention, no, they did a pretty good job, Kamala comes out with a good idea uh, that, that someone happens to agree with. There's a possibility that the Democrats could win the election. But right now, as it stands, assuming that the numbers were fully accurate, and they're not, they never are, uh, Trump would actually prevail in the election. So much for that Kamala surge. I thought that she was ahead by 10,000 points, and uh, everyone loved her, and she had Kamala momentum, and Tim Walls was such a great VP pick, and stuff like that. But that's not the reality, politically speaking. At least not at this moment. Also, any surge that she did get, and she is running ahead of Biden, admittedly, that's because of the Kasich effect, will diminish slowly over time. There's also a debate to worry about. Kamala is not very good at conveying her message. It's like with her word salad that I'll talk about separately. It's like I'll know what she's attempting to say, but she just can't quite word it correctly. And so she always contraposes things. You'll notice that. It's a strange linguistic habit that she has. Uh, she tends to contrapose meanings within the same statement. Uh, for instance, on democracy. Democracy inc is incredibly strong, but it's also incredibly fragile. I know what you mean. You're saying that if we defend democracy and stand together, unity and all these things, democracy is, our democracy will be really strong. And if we falter in that, then things begin to fall apart. I understand what you're trying to convey. The average person's like, huh? It's word salad to them. That, that word is being used often in association with Kamala Harris' speeches. Um, that's because the average person hasn't studied linguistics. Kamala needs to understand this. You need to actually convey a message to people. It doesn't matter what you say, it matters what they hear, what they understand. That's the whole point of language, to generate understanding of a concept, however abstract it may be. Kamala has trouble with this. Trump, meanwhile, has no problem with this. He keeps it terse. Sometimes he runs on within his speeches, and this pisses me off sometimes when he does. He's been much more on message, though, on point uh, in this election than he was in 2016 or 2020. Uh, we're seeing a more solemn, more presidential Trump, actually. I think that's the right note to strike. Um, you need to mix it up with some dank memes, and he has been mainly on Twitter, actually. He's returned to that platform, or X, x.com, whatever. Uh, millennials, we're all going to call it Twitter anyway. Uh, he, he's doing that. He's striking the right note. And that, I think, is another reason not to get black pill. Donald Trump can be his own worst enemy at times. Admittedly, he makes big mistakes sometimes. Usually he's able to recoup the loss, but there are times when he says or does something that eh, is a little bit rankling, especially the run-ons. But he's been much more focused. He's been much more, I, I would even use the term, like, sophisticated, it seems. Um, and the ground game is, is better than it was certainly in 2020 when he couldn't really have a ground game because of lockdownerism. So I don't get black pill. Trump still has the advantage according to the best aggregation firm. That's assuming that the polls are accurate. They are more likely to be weighted in favor of Kamala's campaign 
and that it's there's there's actually a Trump vote in there that's not being accounted for. We've seen that in both of the last election cycles, and it was about a four point break both times. Um, we, we've seen that before. The pollsters, what they did was they looked at 2016 results and they began to weight in favor of the Democrats more because of the popular vote. But that's a national vote. So that means more Californians pour, turn out to vote. Well, it doesn't matter if you have a 100% voter turnout. The number of electors is exactly the same no matter how many you get. In 2020, they had adjusted their numbers because of that and they weighted the polls more. And of course, then they were oversampling Democrats. Now, supposedly... In 2020, Joe Biden got 81 million votes, 81 million scoops of ice cream, much more than Donald Trump did, although Donald Trump did get the most votes for anyone running for re-election in U.S. history. As the population grows, the number is going to tend to go up, by the way. Um, supposedly, Joe Biden got a massive, monumentally higher amount of votes. The pollsters right now, therefore, probably weighting their polls generally, not all of them, but some, in the same direction uh, to the same degree. Now, in 2020, on election day, Biden was almost seven points ahead in the aggregate. Of course, he came out ahead by about 3.5 or 4, something like that. It was a significant gap. If the same weighting is applied to the current polling, whether it's swing states, competitive states, or, or general polling, you would expect Trump to win the popular vote. You would certainly expect him to win most of the swing states, probably pick off Virginia, and therefore coast to re-election. This is a no black pill zone. Right now, there is a $50 million demoralization campaign being actively run, trying to get people to flood Twitter and Instagram and shit like that with black pilled messages about Trump's chances and about how Vance is weird. The Republicans are on their last, like they're disunified. Look at the difference between the conventions. It's only day one of the DNC. Do you see unity or do you see meh, dissension? You see dissension. The RNC, it was almost a fucking love fest. It was almost a little bit cringe at times. Uh, it was almost a little bit too normal. It's like, damn, shake it up a little bit. The highest energy in the room is definitely Hulk Hogan, that's for sure. That's about all. Peace out.